The Unified Forecast System Medium Range Weather Application version 1.0 uses meteorological analysis as raw initial conditions to make forecasts. In this video, you will learn about sources of raw initial conditions that are compatible with this application. The information discussed here is also available in the app's user's guide. This app consists of three components, pre-processing, forecast model, and post-processing. The pre-processing component is called ChangeResCube. It ingests raw initial conditions that describe the state of the atmosphere, land, oceans, and sea ice, and outputs initial condition files that are ready for use by the UFS weather model. The UFS Medium Range Weather app currently only supports the use of raw initial conditions from the Global Forecast System, or GFS. In other words, CFS, ERA-5, ECMWF, etc. are not supported. Additionally, only dates since January 1, 2018 are supported. Older dates may work, but are not guaranteed. The GFS files can be in either GRIB2 or NEMS-IO format. GRIB2 stands for Gridded Binary Version 2, and it's a concise data format standardized by the World Meteorological Organization, and is commonly used in meteorology to store forecast weather data. With this app, you can use GRIB2 resolutions of half a degree or one degree. NEMS-IO is the input-output format associated with the NOAA Environmental Modeling System, or NEMS. The GFS currently used in operations outputs files in both NEMS-IO and GRIB2, covering the globe with approximately 13 kilometer resolution. The app has some capability to automatically download data and stage it on disk, but in this video, I will show how to manually stage data on disk so the app can use it. There are two important variables related to staging data. The first one is the environment variable UFS input, which should be set to a directory where you have permission to stage the data. The other important variable is DIN loc IC, an internal variable in the app workflow that corresponds to the directory where the raw initial conditions are located. If it's not explicitly set, it will point to defaults set by the app. In this video, we will use a directory corresponding to those defaults. In directory DIN loc IC, the raw initial conditions should be located in subdirectories named according to the date. In this example, a half a degree GRIB2 file coexists with NEMS-IO files. When both GRIB2 and NEMS-IO files are present in a directory, the app will default to using the GRIB2 file. If you want to use the NEMS-IO files, you need to explicitly select those files. I'll now demonstrate how to create a case, set it to a desired date, and run it with either GRIB2 or NEMS-IO raw initial conditions. I'll start by defining the environment variable UFS scratch to a location on disk where I have permission to write, since that is where all the output from the run will be written. I have previously cloned the app and checked out the submodules. Now, I create a new case, which I call UFS MR Weather App Workflow.c96. I provide a full path so my output will be written inside the UFS scratch directory. I use compset GFS v15p2 and set the resolution to C96. I set the workflow option to UFS MR Weather, which means that the entire workflow will run, including pre-processing, model, and post-processing. Finally, I set the app to use my compute project. I can see that a case directory was created in my scratch space. And it contains the scripts and XML files needed to configure the case. Next, I set up the case to create the scripts needed to run the model along with the name list. Directory DIN loc IC, where the app will look for the raw initial conditions, is already pointing to the location where I staged the files. I want to initialize the model at 12 UTC on July 15, 2020. In order to change the forecast date in the app, I use the XML change command. First, I set the variable run start date. Next, I set the variable start TOD, which stands for start time of day. Time of day is in seconds, so 12 UTC is equivalent to 43,200 seconds. If I want to use raw initial conditions in GRIB2 format, I'm all set and can now build the case. However, 
If I want to use the NIMS.io files as raw initial conditions, I need to edit user nl ufs atm and set input type to Gaussian. The data in the NIMS.io files are on a Gaussian grid, while the data in the GRIB2 files are on a latitude longitude grid. Now I'm ready to build the case. I hope you found this video to be useful in describing the sources of raw initial conditions for the UFS weather app and how to use them. As I mentioned in the beginning, you can find more information in the app's user's guide. If you have any questions, please post them on the UFS forum. There is a subform specifically for questions about model initialization. Thanks for watching.